Honey Day recaps here, in Japan. VR MMORPGs reach new levels of sophistication where players experience the game with all their five senses and NPCs react like real humans. Hiroshi Yuki realizes he does not have enough money to buy the newest game so he goes to a smaller store to try and find it cheaper. The manager, Riona Kisaragi, tricks him into buying a 10-year-old game titled QAIM Quest, pointing out it's higher than normal rating. Entering the game is his character, Hiro. He is impressed with how realistic the world seems. His first quest is to leave the beginner city of Ted and find Flora Castle. But his childhood friend NPCs, Alicia and her brother Martin, inform him leaving the city is illegal and try to stop him. Annoyed when Martin punches him and he actually feels the pain, Hiro pushes and accidentally kills Martin, disturbing him with how realistic it all seems. Alicia goes mad so he flees into the city where he meets Riona in character as a fairy. She is shocked to find he has already ruined his chances of becoming the hero by earning the title Best Friend Killer. Riona explains the game was designed to be totally realistic, so there is no restarting from the beginning. Riona suggests Hiro get help from Jinji, a player who also killed his best friend NPC, Enrique. Hiro realizes being a murderer has gameplay disadvantages. Alicia reappears and Riona explains Alicia is a skilled knife user and most players make her a permanent teammate. But having killed Martin, this option is unavailable. Riona, who is invisible to NPCs, attacks Alicia's eyes, allowing Hiro to log out. At school, Hiro's friend Takafumi advises him that his bullies might leave him alone if he stops playing games. Logging back in, Hiro finds Jinji, a middle-aged drunk, who reveals he killed his best friends, not realizing his actions were irreversible. And after 10 years of gameplay, he still has not won. As their characters are based on their real bodies, he advises Hiro to learn martial arts in real life. He also tells him about the one player who won the game named Kamui, claiming it will help. Jinji removes Hiro's disguise and exposes him as the wanted murderer. Jinji advises Hiro to never admit he killed Martin or he will have to serve an actual prison sentence. In prison, Martin's ghost appears and decides to haunt Hiro until he remembers their childhood promise which Hiro has no memory of. Hiro realizes Jinji is similarly haunted by his best friends. Hiro is then retrieved by a girl named Mizarusa. The game warns him he is about to experience intense stimulation and he gives consent, thinking he and Mizarusa are going to have sex, only to realize she is actually the town inquisitor. She explains if he confesses, he goes to prison, but if he endures torture, he will be freed. Riona finally appears, explaining if he does not want to be treated as a murderer for the entire game. He must endure the torture. Mizarisa prepares to cut off his legs and arms, but the torture is suddenly stopped. Examining Hiro's title, Riona realizes that having wet his pants in fear, Hiro accidentally unlocked a previously unknown skill and storyline that avoids the torture. While Riona is ecstatic, Hiro furiously quits the game and swears to never play again. Hiro remembers how he tripped and accidentally wet himself during his first race in high school. Like McLachlan, an Olympic medalist in the audience, identified his lack of mental strength and advised him to look inward. As such, Hiro quit the track team and became the target of bullies. In the present, his sister criticizes him for quitting just because the game became difficult. After bullies take his money again, he goes to Riona's shop to return the game. However, she lets him know about Soakairo Kamui a local politician who attributed his personal success to lessons he learned from winning the game. She then shows Hiro a walkthrough Kamui created, but no one used it because as a teenager, Kamui was unbearably rude. Hiro learns he must beat Alicia without fighting, acquire a sword, allow Martin to continue haunting him and begin acquiring items as shops in the game can and will run out of necessary items. Riona convinces Hiro to continue playing by promising to marry him if he beats the game. Logging back in, Hiro decides to play the unknown storyline while Mizarissa decides Hiro is her favorite victim ever and hopes to torture him again. Tesla, captain of the city guard, explains he is declaring Martin's death an unfortunate accident. So Hiro is set free. Unfortunately, due to the realism, Alicia still wants revenge and the villagers still believe he is guilty. Needing money to acquire necessary items, Hiro asks Jinji for a loan. When Jinji refuses, Hiro loses his temper. Martin's ghost then appears, reminding Hiro what happened the last time he was enraged. The ghosts of Jinji's childhood friends also appear to speak to him, though Hiro cannot see or hear them. Riona convinces Jinji the fight was a duel, so he hands over his gold and Hiro's title unfortunately changes. Deciding he needs smoke bombs to defend against Alicia, 
Pyro goes to an item shop run by Melissa, only to find he is still being charged inflated prices. He attempts to retrieve the sword he should have started the game with, but finds Alicia waiting, attempting to use a smoke bomb. Pyro forgets that due to the realism, he actually needs to light the fuse first. Alicia tries to kill him but he is saved by Ms. Arisa, who refuses to let Alicia kill her favorite victim. Alicia proves to be more skilled than expected and knocks Mizarissa unconscious. Remembering he is supposed to defeat Alicia without fighting, Hyro gropes her breasts. But due to the realism, she reacts like a real woman and grows angrier. Martin's ghost appears to assist Alicia in killing him so Hyro blurts out a love confession. As his childhood friend, Alicia reveals she is conflicted and runs away. Hyro realizes Alicia is unaware she is a game character and actually believes he is her beloved childhood friend. And while Martin's death was an accident, he ran like a coward rather than grieve with her. Realizing the point of Kamui's walkthrough, Hiro asks Martin to continue haunting him, which unlocks one of his character's childhood memories. Learning the childhood promise was that he and Martin would stay friends forever. Martin forgives Hiro and moves on to the afterlife. When Hiro's title changes to something slightly better, Riona believes he might once again have the opportunity to become the hero starting with getting his rusty sword repaired. They then notice the city is on fire, which Riona has never seen happen before. Hyro learns from the blacksmith that goblins are attacking. Riona warns Hyro goblins are ridiculously powerful, and if he dies, his game console will be irreversibly shut down as a realism penalty. When Hyro asks if any players have defeated a goblin before, Riona reveals Kamui and Shohei have the latter being a boxing champion named Shaohei Ada who publicly admitted defeating a goblin was harder than defeating a real-life human opponent. Hiro has Riona distract a goblin to save a little girl NPC who resembles his sister. When the goblin almost kills her, Hiro unlocks a super speed skill based on his real-life running ability and saves her. Tesla then arrives and kills the goblins, with Riona revealing he is one of the game's strongest NPCs. Hyro furiously discovers saving the girl added Alita complex to his title. Tesla asks him to join the city guard as a mercenary and Hyro accepts before logging out. While watching Kamui's walkthrough later on, Hyro learns doing this is actually the worst choice to make in-game as the survival rate is only 0.1%, meaning there is a 99.9% .9 chance Hyro's console will be destroyed if he continues play. Hyro learns that having kept the childhood promise and defeating Alicia without fighting, he actually has a 0.5% chance of surviving, but only if he endures Tesla's intense 5 days training and survives the second goblin attack. Hyro then informs Keith he is not quitting and will be spending five days in the game. Re-entering it, Tesla introduces Hyro to Queen Govern, the enthusiastic ruler of the city. Hyro later meets two mercenary recruits like himself, Granada and Palu, as well as Kathy and Bob, soldiers who help train recruits. His main trainer is Amos, the soldier who initially arrested him for Martin's murder. Hyro fails miserably against Amos and realizes, like his real body, he has no fighting ability at all so he is ostracized. Hyro oversleeps and is late to his second day, so Amos has him practice alone. Granada and Palu bully Hyro for being a friend killer and weak soldier, but Kathy offers to train with him and show him the basics. On the third day, Hyro is beaten in a duel by Granada, who along with Palu continues to mock him. Hyro realizes they are exactly like his real-life bullies. Riona takes Hyro to the city guard's counselor for depression but the counselor criticizes Hyro for his lack of combat skills. Kathy suggests Hyro pray for guidance, but all that happens is a nun douses him with holy water. On day four, Paulu viciously beats him and warns Kathy if she is Hyro's friend. He and Granada will beat her too, so Kathy rejects Hyro. The next day, Granada is pranked so badly he quits. Tesla later arrives with a letter supposedly from Paulu claiming Amos was responsible for the pranks. Tesla demands to know what has been happening and Kathy reveals the bullying Hyro suffered and how Amos, the recruits, and herself did nothing to stop it. As a result, Tesla fires Amos while Kathy and the recruits apologize to Hyro. That night, Riona reveals to Hyro the pranks were her doing, which causes his title to change as though it was his fault. Despite the disastrous training, Hyro decides to fight the second goblin assault, even if it destroys his console. For his bravery, Riona decides to reveal the true reason she wants him to keep playing. Riona reveals Kamui once rejected her in-game because her breasts were too big, so she swore to marry someone else who completed the game as petty revenge. Logging out, Hyro finds Keed is increasingly worried about him, 
checking the walkthrough. Kamui tells Hiro to stop relying on the walkthrough and just fight. Tesla announces he has replaced Granada and Palu with Mizarissa and Alicia and orders them to patrol the evacuated city with Hiro. Alicia and Mizarissa apprehend a thief who admits a crime boss ordered the thieves to steal as much as possible before the goblins arrive. Infiltrating the thieves' headquarters, they find the boss is Jinji. Annoyed at Jinji's selfishness, Hiro insists on fighting him alone, only for Alicia to defeat Jinji to save time. Jinji is impressed with Alicia and slightly regrets having killed both his childhood friends, but is happy to go to prison as prison cells are exempt from being attacked. The goblins attack and despite having already gone the bathroom, Hiro has to go again. While he is in the bathroom, an unprepared Hiro is confronted by a goblin. Mizarissa decapitates the goblin and offers to seduce Hiro. Alicia interrupting them allows Hiro to escape, but he has to use the bathroom yet again. Riona asks about his past so he explains what happened. Riona teases him about it, angering him, which stops his stomach ache but changes his title to reflect his bathroom habits. When the Goblin King One-Eye invades Queen Govern's palace, Hiro suspects he is the reason the mission has a 0.1% survival rate. Tesla brings in three captured goblins to distract One-Eye. Based on several clues, Hiro realizes they have been abducted for a long time. When Tesla kills One-Eye, he admits he captured the goblins seven years ago, and One-Eye was their father. Govern then arrives and they reveal goblins are actually intelligent and peaceful, but fearsome when enraged. As such, they use that to their advantage to terrify people from leaving and entering Ted, thus allowing them to rule the city completely unchallenged. Tesla kills his men to hide the truth, which causes Hiro to realize Tesla is the true final boss he must defeat. Alicia defends Hiro, having decided to forgive him and is killed. Hiro then manages to use his speed skill to defend against Tesla. It is revealed via Kamui's walkthrough that the player's strong emotions temporarily negate realism. Hiro outmaneuvers and stabs Tesla, only for his sword to snap. Just as Tesla prepares to strike, Hiro's soul goes to meet Martin, who offers to give Hiro a hand. Hiro returns to finds his broken sword has become a cursed best friend killer blade. Hiro prepares to kill Tesla, only to wake up in his room having forgotten about Govern, who bumped him from behind, allowing Tesla to kill him and destroy his console. Depressed, Hiro notices a new section of Kamui's walkthrough which informs him of a way of resuming the game an hour prior to his death. Hiro decides to spend an entire month preparing and begins exercising, lifting himself out of his depression, becomes closer to his sister, and even inadvertently stands up to his bullies. Hiro realizes the same thing happened to Kamui, which gives him hope. A month later, Riona loans Hiro a new console, and he re-enters the game. Please subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and until next time, take care.